Starting today's news, Bilal Mohammed marks Leon Edwards ahead of UFC 304. Recently, during a conversation with Tom Aspinall, Leon Edwards revealed he's hired a sleep specialist to help him get ready for his title fight with Bilal Mohammed at UFC 304. My dad spoke with Tim and he said Leon's getting like a specialist in. He said, well, you see Leon asking yeah, him, so I've been right. waiting to yeah. ask you because I had some mad theory about what I'm going to do yeah. and it's completely different to yeah. yours. And now, <laughs> now I'm just basically going to copy Leon's version. Yeah. I'm going to try for that. At the start, that. though, I was like similar. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to like, sleep in the day and be awake at night. Yeah, yeah. But then when I spoke to the guy, he's like, oh, you can't do that because you need your body needs sunlight, you need, day, you need yeah, day, yeah, daylight. Yeah. So he's basically saying that you need to somehow adjust it, that you don't have to train at five in the morning. Yeah. You need to get your body to about, used to about one, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. After that, you should be fine because when I'm fine at 11 o'clock, I don't train at 11 o'clock. I'm normally done by 6, 6 p.m. Yeah, me too. in my house. Too. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. So, um, you just basically moving the clock a little bit, hour by hour, six weeks out, bit by bit, get to about 2 o'clock, and that's that's, so that's, that's where you want it. And you still be able to get sunlight, and you still be able to, to train, you know, so it'd, it'd be good. But I think I'm going to I'm gonna copy your. Yeah, you, did you pay for that, by the way? I did pay for that. Oh, I've <laughs> got a cheap <laughs> <but, laughs> <but, laughs> The secret is everyone else is going to start copying it now. Yeah, but you can have it for free, mate, to be fair. I got another meeting with in the comments, Bala Muhammad reacted and mocked Leon saying my right hand will put him to sleep for free July 27th. A fan responded to Bala saying the only way you put anyone to sleep is if they watch your fights. For the next story, Dana White admits to staging an event. A few months ago on the Howie Mandel podcast, Dana White walked out just a few seconds into the episode. During a recent episode of the Flagrant podcast, Dana admitted the Howie Mandel podcast was actually fake. Answer that. What, what was that set up with you and how it had to be? So, what happened was, I I, I did the Sage deal. Yeah. I kept when she called me. Trying <laughs> to me. Well, okay. So, how did we not talk about both of these? Yeah, I have so many questions. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, Sage Steel and I are good friends. Sage. I love her. She asked me to be her first guest on yeah. the podcast, so I go out there. Now, the the studio is owned by Howie Mandel where these podcasts take place. She was signed to Bill Maher's uh, podcast company, yeah. and they're all done there in Howie Mandel's studio. Got it. So we get done with the podcast, and Howie Mandel walks in, and he's like, um, I've 100 podcasts a week happen here. I've never watched any of them. I watched your whole podcast, love who you are, what you stand for, and all this stuff, and we hit it off. We start talking, great dude. So he's like, let me show you around the studio. So he's fucking got, he's involved in all kinds of shit. He owns social media companies and all this other stuff. Howie Mandel owns a lot of shit that people don't realize. Hmm. Smart guy, great guy. So we're walking through and stuff. He goes, would you do me a favor? That's great. And I said, yeah, what's up? And he's like, would you come in and get up and walk off my podcast? That's great. I go, mm. I would be fucking honored to walk off your <laughs> podcast because I'm so fucking sick of doing podcasts. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. This is, that's so, we go in there and do it, right? Uh, and he's like, awesome. take this to the grave. I said, done, I'll take it to the grave, <laughs> well, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm take walking around, yeah. I go do this thing with the Nelk boys, yeah. right? We're doing this monkey bomb fucking tour. Yeah. yeah. The whole fucking crowd starts chanting, fuck Howie Mandel. Uh -huh. Fuck <laughs> Howie Mandel. Uh -huh. I go, whoa, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. time out. I can't do this. Yeah. Howie Mandel's the greatest fucking dude ever. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Howie. It's it just, when I go out and people start fucking shitting on the guy, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah, he yeah. could give a flying fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it, so. Paolo Costa challenges surfing legend Kelly Slater. Recently, Paolo Costa shared a video of him trying to surf and then challenged Kelly Slater. Slater is a world-famous professional surfer and holds the record of 11 World Surf League championships. Fight Whitaker, Shane Strickland. I think now should I challenge Kelly Slater for a surf thing. Maybe it's going to be harder or easier, I don't know, but at least in surfing you don't get punched in the face. <laughs> Kelly, I'm not so good like you, not even close, but I challenge you to the surf thing. No, so hard, so fucking hard to stay and stand up on that thing. Kelly, you are the man. To do that, I will be honest. It's easier fight than stand up on that. Congrats. 
Dominic Reyes reacts after his first win in four years. Former UFC title challenger Dominic Reyes scored his first win in nearly five years on Saturday night, finishing Dustin Jacoby in three minutes of the first round in the UFC Louisville co-main event. Speaking at the post-fight press conference, Reyes said it was a relief to finally get the W and that he plans to rebuild himself as a legitimate light heavyweight title challenger. After everything you've been through, is this, is this just a big relief? It's a relief, absolutely. Um, when he hit me, that was a relief. I was like, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, um, the questions about, I had so many questions, just questioning myself. Um, and then I saw my performance and I was like, wow. And I felt it out there. And I was like, I really do love this and I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see a new you moving forward? You're going to see me. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm winning. Let's go. What? Um, who would you like to face next? I have no names. No, nothing like that. I'm just focused. I was focused on today and that was it. When you landed that left hook, did, did you know that that was the shot? Did you work on that this camp? Obviously, you were talking about not even necessarily knocking him out. But uh, did you know that that was the shot? I mean, with me, it's, the left is always dangerous. It could always be the shot. Um, but I, all camp was just working on just movement, fluidity, being comfortable in there. You know, I was a two-year layoff, so I still had to, you know, get comfortable again in there and do my thing. But the training camp went so well that when I went in there, everything was slower than I anticipated. I saw everything much so clearly. Um, and when he did rush me, I was right before then, I was like, it's about to pop off. Like the tension just kept building and building. We were throwing kicks at each other, throwing jabs, kind of moving around, slipping each other's move punches. And I'm like, <laughs> it's on now, dude, let's go. And, uh, and then he, I think I smiled at him and it made him mad. So he rushed me and that was the worst thing, worst decision he made tonight. And as far as the rest of the division goes, are you just going to kind of look to what's presented to you or are you going to pay attention if guys are calling you out? I mean, I'm a fan of the sport as well, and I'm always paying attention. I'm always watching, you know, I might be in the dark. <laughs> I might be in the middle of the desert where I live. I might be on the top of a mountain on my dirt bike, but I'm paying attention. Um, and it's more about the timing versus the opponent. Um, obviously, I want to move up. We're working towards the title again, <clears throat> but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't really have anybody in mind. If people want to call me out, you know, cool. It gives me more options. You know, do my job for me. Do my manager's job for me. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a great manager. I have a great team, and we'll figure out what's next. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please like this video and subscribe for more MMA news.